Now we're here at one of our favorite new tree stand setups for this fall. And I wanted to talk about what makes your stand location suck before the season even begins. You know, a lot of you can't wait to go sit in a certain tree, but there's really little hope of shooting a deer out of it, shooting the target buck you're after, because you're not following some key ingredients that helps make us successful with our own tree stands. First off, a lot of your stand locations have really bad access, meaning when you're going in and out, you're spooking deer. We can never say ever, never, when it comes to deer hunting. But you can say this is a food source related stand, so we can't enter here in the morning because the deer are priority there. This is an afternoon stand, and so there's, uh, we can't access through bedding to get there. So you have to really be careful and look at the timing of where your stands are at and understand where the deer are at going in so you're not spooking deer. A lot of people say, oh, you have to have hidden access. Deer can't smell you. But really, it's all about whether they hear you, see you, or smell you. You can't spook them going in and out. Now, number two, so many of you are hunting right on top of food plots. That food source, and it could be a field edge too, ag field, they attract a lot of deer. For that level of attraction, there's a lot of risk associated with that attraction, meaning that you go into that stand location, all the deer are attracted there, you're on the food source or right alongside it, you spook those deer, well, they just don't come back. And it's very deceiving because you look at the outdoor channel, you look at cable, you look at uh, YouTube, you see these videos of hunters hunting and they hunt on these food sources. Well, they don't tell you that some of the big names that they have a hundred setups like that. And they might not even hunt those spots for two or three years. They want to wait for that certain big buck to get there. Or I've known an outdoor personality that sat literally in the same blind 22 times in a row until this buck got within 50 yards and then finally took the shot sitting dark to dark. Now this was a big monster, but that's more just specific food plot hunting. Not, you know, probably you, me even, because I like to work and uh, I have other things to do. I can hunt when I want to, but I have a lot of work to fit in between. So I can't afford to sit for 22, day, 22 days in a row, no matter what the buck is, um, and sit on a food source, dark to dark, get in there really early, get out really late, and I don't think you can either. So you really need to manage that food source attraction because once you spook it out, it's done. It's not like you see on TV or on YouTube. Then number three, so many of you are hanging your hat on a spot where you see these mature bucks all summer long, and that's good for a weekend sit, for opening day, opening night, opening weekend. But outside of that, what's your plan B? Because that summer pattern is very fleeting. It's here today, gone tomorrow, literally overnight. And a lot of that's because of the applied pressure that you throw into that location. But a lot of it has to do with, and a lot more, that that summer food source that that mature buck is hitting, he'll travel miles to get to that and then and locate a summer spot. That summer food source is shrinking, it's going to be harvested, it's gone, the summer cover with big open canopy, canopy and a lot of shade, more bug free than down in the swamps and the thick stuffs where he wants to be during the fall and winter is disappearing. Right around that time where most opening days are beginning, that's right at that time, whether it's mid-September to early October, when bucks are making their annual shift from their summer cover to their fall cover, and a lot of times that's about a mile and a half. So I'm not saying not to go in for that buck on opening day. What I am saying is to have a plan B. And whether it's hunting that summer food source or actually going in and accessing spooking deer and then also getting on a food plot location or open field where those deer are hunting, those could all hurt you. And that's where you see this this stand right here, we're back in the woods. In fact, we access, we're only about 100 yards from the field edge over this way, but we access the stand by coming in from the opposite direction. It's gonna be about a 20 to 25 minute walk from the vehicle. We're gonna to have to go up, down, and then up again all the way to here. We'll have to go up and down a few hundred feet in elevation. But when we get here, we're not walking through any of this field out here. What I find is, is during bow season, I harvest a very, low percentage of my mature bucks and my target bucks actually out in the open. So this really, really sets up nice for that um, and really adhering to those first three principles as well. Number four, so many of you with a tree stand, 
Um, you know, I, for example, I love big white pines. I love white cedar for tree stands. They don't run, there's not much sap, but there's a really good smell with them. Red cedar is really nice too. But I wanna have the right tree in the right location, which sometimes is the wrong looking tree or the wrong type of tree. This tree right here was very difficult to get the stand in. We actually found a flat spot where we could put our family tradition and just lean it right up against there. And we have great cover up there. And so what's really nice, we're sitting at that point where all these trunks start to scatter. And then we're sitting in that location. We just look at part of that tree. So many of you focus on, well, I have to be in this tree, this 22 inch diameter tree, 20 inch plus diameter tree. And I have to be at 22 feet in the air every single time. Well, sometimes you go up high, get you out of the cover. Hey guys, just a second, we'll be right back. But First Light has an incredible launch. They're phase, core, and thermic outer gear. Lightweight, medium, heavy. I mix and match all of them. First Light's evolved over the last five years that I've used it, going from windproofing to all this great stuff. Even their lightweight stuff has fleece now. It's all super quiet, fits incredible, and I feel privileged to use it please check it out july 30th this is a giant launch the biggest i've seen since i've been with first light so check it out go look at the site and now we'll go back to the video sometimes you're going in a big fat tree but it's out of the shooting range of where you're watching with a bow i want to make sure my shots are i'm not hanging my hat on that's a 28 yard shot i get one shot in that location i want to have shot 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 when i'm coming through here and in this case we have a really big red cedar down there where the bucks cross and cruise. I wanna be able to shoot right there. So we're backed up right against this cliff. We can manage our scent. It's not the best of trees. I can say we have at least three or four better quote trees around here to put a stand in, but you have to pick the right tree in the right spot, which ne might not necessarily be the prettiest tree. And number five, what kind of story does your stand tell? You know, Dylan brought up this topic all around and he reminded me of stand and I have a, in my first book I came out, they have stand stories. And he reminded me of that and kind of reminded me of that concept in general, just what kind of story does your stand tell? In this case right here, we have a cruising trail on the bottom right here. We're above bedding, our scent blows out over the bedding. We have a cruising bench right here. So these bucks either cruise right in front of us right below us. We're off the field about 100 yards. We're behind a big bank of switchgrass up here. So we have total cover. The deer feel very secure in here. We have a water hole here. We'll add a mock scrape at some point. We have great access. We can get in and out without spooking deer. We have very thick cover down below for buck bedding on a bench that goes all the way around this. So we've cut and created buck bedding. We have bedding down below even further, bedding below there. We have food really good food about two and a half acres that starts about 200 yards that way you go over the field we have another big pocket of food on that other side so from food to cruising to buck bedding to water to access to managing our scent this stand tells a really big story and you find the more of a story and the more of a reason and set of reasons there is for a stand to be in location then you can be a lot more successful if you're looking at it a buck comes out in that corner to feed in this summer food coming out of that summer bedding area and that's it. Then the opportunity to sit and hunt, have a great hunt out of that stand location is very fleeting. In fact, there's no story for that stand location once you get a week or two into the season. And I'm not saying you don't take a chance on that location for opening day on a certain buck. But keep in mind, the more you sit at that stand location with a very small story, the later into the season it goes, then your chance of success dwindles with each sit. So think about that. What kind of story does your stand tell? How can you get in and out without spooking deer? Are you in the right tree, which might not necessarily be the pretty tree? Are you staying off your food sources so you don't spook them? Are you in fall locations, winter locations, good browse, good cover, thick cover that you can imagine a mature buck actually living in during the fall? And if your stand relates to all those things, you'll find your stand doesn't actually suck. You have a good stand and you're gonna have a good hunt this fall. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you watching the videos. We have over 600 articles on whitetailhabitatsolution.com. It's all free. 
And I also appreciate those of you that check out our books. I have five books starting from 2012. We have web classes on the site, whattohabitatsolutions.com. Check out Pure Wildlife Blends. I really appreciate you guys that have already purchased our seed. We've had thousands of people. We've shipped to 48 states. We have digital land management through whitetailstrategy.com. That's taking all these ideas and concepts I put in the YouTube videos and digitally transforming your land for you. And then finally, we have our clients and client visits. We'll visit over 300 clients as a group this year. We visit anywhere in the country. Boots on the ground is always the best, but we have a lot of ways to help you from free to client visits and all in between. Check us out again, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, Pure Wildlife Plans, and whitetailstrategy.com.